Hi everyone, uh, Laurie Nielsen Glenn here, Tanse. I'm the author of several collections of poetry and prose and I'm going to read two poems today. The first is from a recent collection that gathers stories of my Métis and Ininawak uh, grandmothers and their contemporaries. It's called Following the River, Traces of Red River Women. And this poem is called Her Many Names. Frost exploding, the great moon, eagle, goose, frog, egg laying, feather molting, flying up, rutting, migrating, freeze up, hoarfrost. Long nights she waxes and wanes, is new, crescent, quarter, gibbous, full. To some a mirror of emotion, to others queen of life and death. Hakate, Grandmother, Luna, Eternal One. Works tides, holds a lantern to the dark, promises renewal and perseverance. Without her, we are not. Learn under her watch, strength, courage, respect, how to scrabble for truth, be guided by honesty, walk with humility. Grandmothers, Keichi Chowick, Washi Sui Squeo, Kitty, Sally, Catherine, under the same moon as cousins, strangers, the unnamed, notorious, ordinary, extraordinary, their stations in life both promise and threat, the Bible, solace and weapon, blood the source of strength and shame. Few of you knew old age. I sift for detail in the words of those who whittle lives with a pen, a rare instrument for a woman, a shred, debris, a tendril, a past you lived we cannot fully know, not the rustle of your coats, footsteps in the night air, the touch of silken or calloused hands, the tangy scent of ashes cooled in the hearth. Wisdom in the stirring of life under sugar moon, storms of thunder moon, in falling leaves moon when loss is all round. You have watched the river rise and fall, known it packed with ice, muddy in spring rain, swift in summer, a red stream. Many granddaughters later, countless first cries and graves. And here I am, time waning. The moon glints on the river. Water rises like blood. The second poem I'm going to read is from Prairie Fire's issue uh, entitled Why We Walk. It came out last year. And this poem is titled The End is Where You Start From. Along the beach, the wind skims its scarves over your skin. The ocean billows while the dog zigzags from the lip of the water to the rocks above, then bounds ahead to dig with a fury that looks like ecstasy. It's before the season of flimsy umbrellas, children's screams, the scent of coconuts staining the air. On this mild winter day, time spools behind you. Hours disappear under your feet, Long shadows carve the setting sun. You refuse the metaphor. Instead, a bloom opens under your ribs. Your, your stride is a portal to what you have wanted all along. To be burnished by spindrift, sprayed with sand by a creature's paw while the noise of more or less and before and after and when and how is still. Nothing here but the stick that needs throwing, salt air, a flat black rock to rest your feet at low tide, and oh, this silvery green shale tangled in ochre seaweed, its touch delivering your body to a distant shore you might dare call timeless. Miigwech, thank you very much. Thank you to Turnstone for this opportunity, and happy anniversary. Hi from Saskatoon. My name is Catherine Lawrence and I'm the author of a poetic memoir that will be released in the spring of 2022 by Turnstone Press and the memoir is titled Black Umbrella. I wrote the memoir um, as a contribution to the conversation about the way families are evolving, changing, 
Um, I've written it from the perspective of somebody who witnessed, lived through their parents' divorce and came out the other side. Here is um, a sample poem from the first part of the memoir. It's titled, It's Not Fair to Compare, So Let's. Part A. My roommate's mother rides a greyhound bus for eight hours, then grabs a cab to our basement apartment off campus. Her weekend luggage is a soft-sided, dull brown suitcase and a cardboard box loaded with fall fruit. She unpacks ripe red apples, green pears, dark blue concord grapes, peaches firm as tennis balls, each piece washed and rinsed, and more. White cotton camisoles, one for Laura and one for me. Laura offers her bed, but this mother opts for the pull-out couch instead. That night, she treats us to pork cutlets at a diner downtown. She doesn't backcomb her thin gray hair or wear foundation to hide wrinkles that soften as she shares stories from home about Laura's father, Laura's three older brothers. We leave together. I hang back a few paces, let them chat, hold hands, follow the long scenic route home, the floodlit Rideau Canal that will soon freeze for skating miles and miles. Part B. My mother hits town that same first semester in a navy blue Lincoln Continental driven by the married man whose other life is a wife and two kids. He and mother show up at the apartment after checking in at an historic hotel that costs as much for two nights as all my textbooks for the year. He carries one bag, a black leather hard shell portable bar the size of a Smith Corona typewriter case. Mother unsnaps the brass locks, sets up cocktail hour beside the two burner hot plate, martini glasses, shaker, vodka, dry, ver dry vermouth, olives. Yes, I have ice. No, thank you. Laura escapes to the library. I sip cold tea. Mother tells me again, I'm just like my father. Dull. No fun. I don't argue. I don't push back. Speak up. Someone in this party for three needs to stay sober, not lose the keys. Fast forward to my own marriage and my children and a life that is, um, uh, a life where I stand um, looking over my shoulder, um, trying hard to learn from uh, from uh, a marriage that didn't work. Well, this one that I'm in works quite well. So this is called, I am the empty nest. The first one flew away, higher education. The second stayed in the nest. She wasn't ready. Good, neither was I. Didn't last. She grew up, fledged. If there is a better metaphor, I don't know it, haven't heard it. I am every cliche in the book. I am home where my heart is. I am time running out. I am careful for what I wish. I am what I eat. I'm cake shaped in honor of the nest. I crack eggs, separate whites, add one cup sugar, pinch of salt, a little cornstarch. Whip at high speed until thick, peaks rise. I heap the mess onto a metal sheet, sculpt with a spatula, create an airy meringue. Bake an hour on low, leave to cool in oven overnight. Crusty, brittle outside, creamy smooth inside. I am every cloud with a silver lining. My first and my last flock to my table for pavlova often as they're able. Spoon cake garnished with lemon curd, 
pitted red cherries, raspberries, blackberries, kiwi slices, ripe peach. <laughs> My sweet grief, the one that comes and goes, a thing with feathers. Thank you so much.